hello and welcome to Dev Camp Day 2. My name is Adrian and today I'm going to talk about getting your development environment and your Meno board set up and ready to start building IoT applications. So let's assume that you have yourself a brand new Meno board, whether it's a, a Meno Feather form factor like we have here, this is a Feather V2, or a Core Compute Module. In either case, we want to get our board set up with the latest version of the Meadow firmware and then make sure that our development environment is ready to deploy Meadow applications. Now, before I go any further, I want to just switch over to the Wilderness Labs development portal. That's developer.wildernesslabs.co. And if we go to the Deploy Meadow OS section, you're going to see instructions that are going to cover everything that I'm going to cover today and a whole lot more. Uh, today, I'm on Windows. And I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2022. Uh, there's also instructions for VS Code and, and support for Mac OS and Linux. And regardless of where we're working and what we're using, the first thing we need to do is install the Meadow CLI. And this is the command line interface for Meadow. I'm just going to copy this command right here. And I'm going to bring over my terminal of choice today, that's PowerShell, and paste in that command. And this is going to install the CLI if you don't have it installed already. Uh, not surprisingly, I have it on my system here and you can see the message is there. And if you needed to update, .NET tool update would do that as well. And this gives us access to, well, the Meadow CLI. If I type in Meadow, you can see a list of commands. And this thing does, well, it does quite a bit, uh, but does two really important things. One, it lets us download the latest version of the Meadow OS firmware via Meadow Download OS and deploy that to our Meadow device. I'm gonna type in Meadow Download OS hyphen F the F is to force download because not surprisingly, I have this installed on my system as well. And I wanted to show you that process pretty quick, just a few megabytes. And now I have the latest version on my local system. So now I want to flash my Meadow board. So to do that, I need to put it into bootloader mode. And this is the same on both the core compute and the feather form factor. I'm just going to unplug the board and I'm going to hold down the boot button. And you might even hear windows chime and recognize the device. That board's now in bootloader mode and it's ready to be flashed. And to do that, I would type in meadow flash OS. And if I push to return, this will start pushing the binaries over to my device. It includes the binaries uh, for the F7, the, the all the bits that make up the meadow OS, and even firmware for our co-processor. We'll talk about another session. I won't just now, though, it takes a few minutes. Um, but again, this will just run and then after a few minutes, my board be all up to date. So, I want to get this back into regular mode so I can develop on it. So I'm going to unplug it again and replug it in without pushing a button. And now we're back into normal mode. And I want to show you that I'm running the latest version of the OS on this board. So to do this, I'm going to type in meadow list ports. And what this will do is it'll tell me all of the ports for the meadow devices connected to my machine. In this case, I only have one, there's COM36. And let's check the Meadow version here. So I'm gonna type Meadow device info. And then I wanna specify the COM port, dash F COM36 in this case, and run that. And let's take a look at what's on this board. There we see the latest OS, the latest version of the runtime, and the latest version of the coprocessor. Great, my board's all ready to go. Let's switch over to our IDE and see what it takes to deploy an application. So let's bring up Visual Studio. Let's get this off screen for a moment. So here I have Visual Studio 2022. And to deploy Meadow applications, we need to install the Meadow extension. This is true for both VS 2022, VS 2019, Visual Studio Code. Here in 2022, go up to Extensions, Manage Extensions. In the Online section, I'm just going to search for Meadow. And here we see VS 2022 tools for Meadow. And this check mark up here indicates that I have it installed already. And if I didn't, I would just push the install button, quick restart of Visual Studio, and we're all set. Now this does a few things for us. First and foremost, it lets us communicate directly with the Meadow device. You can see this up here. See, it says Meadow devices, and there's that COM36 again. So this is now able to talk to my Meadow device. But of course, the other thing it does for us, it gives us access to Meadow templates so we can build brand new Meadow applications. I'm just gonna search for Meadow. And we're gonna see several templates. We've got application templates for the, the Feather form factor. We all have application templates for the core compute module and the ability to create libraries. And as you see here, we actually have quite a few. And notice that we have C Sharp support. There's also Visual Basic and F Sharp, all of our favorite .NET languages. 
I'm gonna keep it simple though. I'm gonna build a meadow application with C sharp. And for that, I'm just going to scroll down. Actually, I'm just filter by language. Let's go C sharp. And here we go, meadow application. I'm gonna select next. And let's give our app a name. I'm gonna call it meadow blink uh, because the default template on the F7 is gonna control the onboard LED. And let's hit create. Now, the first thing I wanna do is just actually deploy an app to our meadow device. And to do that, make sure that we have our device selected. Here's our COM port. And I'm gonna right click on my project and hit deploy. Alternatively, I could put plus, I uh, push the, uh, the run button up here and debug. And this is gonna start pushing over both the Meadow application, the out of the box application from the template, but also a lot of supporting libraries. And so we're building C Sharp applications, we're using .NET, and we need those .NET base class libraries that are built for Meadow. And so those are gonna start being pushed over. And what you will find when you have a brand new device or you've recently updated to a new version of Meadow OS, you're gonna see those files get pushed over and that first deploy takes a little bit longer. You can see that running in the background, but although it's moving pretty quickly. And really fantastic on Meadow, we actually use something called linking. And what that means is we'll go through the libraries and it'll take out the bits that we're not using for our specific application, which will both shorten that deployment time and reduce the amount of space we're using on the Meadow device. So while that's happening, let's just take a very quick look at our Meadow solution. So it's here, we have a solution called Meadow Blink and there's a Meadow Blink project. And all the magic happens here in the Meadow app.cs. Let's open that up. I'm just gonna hide our output. You can watch that deploy in the background. So a few interesting things. So notice we have a class here called Meadow app and it derives from the special app class. And that's a Meadow app class and it's a generic and we specify the hardware we're using. In this case, we're using a Feather V2. Now, if you have an older version of, of Meadow, an older Feather board, you can swap that to V1 or alternately change this to a core compute. Although this application is meant for the Feather and with that, it's actually gonna control that onboard LED. And so here we have an RGB PWM LED um, field. And if we go, we've got a couple of methods we override as part of the Meadow lifecycle. And the first one here is the initialize method. And this is a really great place to initialize our hardware. We're not going deep here, but you can still take a look. So we wanna instantiate our RGB PWM LED object. This is representing the onboard color LED. And so we instantiate, we make a new instance of it. And in this case, what we do is we specify the way it's connected to the board. In this case, there's specific pins for the red and green and blue uh, portions of that LED. And if you're not familiar with RGB LEDs, they're actually pretty neat under the hood. They're actually three different LEDs combined into a single package. And we vary the color by varying the intensity of the red, the green, and the blue. Uh, a little fun fact for you. Now back to the C sharp. So we initialize, in this case, we initialize our our LED object, we can start controlling it, and then we override another lifecycle method, and that's the run method. And this is where we start doing the work in our application. In this case here, well, we wanna control that onboard LED, so we're calling a helper method called cycle colors. And lots to unpack here, but just really quickly, this is just a fun demo app that's gonna loop indefinitely through a while loop, but notice we're seeing modern C sharp. We've got an async task returning method. We're awaiting calls. In this case, we've got another helper method called show color pulse. We specify a color and a duration. And if we look at the, the details of this method, we'll scroll down, you can see here, it's gonna call a method directly on that onboard LED object, the thing that represents our physical part and call start pulse. And we pass in our color and then we're gonna hang out for a certain duration and then of course, this is a task tree method, it'll return and go on to the next one. And what this will do, of course, is this is going to go through and pulse different colors. And if we go back to our output now, let's just bring this up. And you can see here, well, we see some output, we've initialized, we've done run and subtle colors. But the most important part of the thing here is of course, to go back to our Meadow device. And we can see that our onboard LED is flashing. We've deployed all of our libraries, we deployed our application, We've successfully run a Meadow app and we're getting our output back in Visual Studio. We're now ready to go build more complex applications. And you're gonna see more fun uh, later on in the conference. Thank you so much.